Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2015. This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. We're here for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next guest is Bill Philbin, VP of Virtual Development Unit of HP Storage. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So Virtual Development Unit, HP mm -hmm. Storage. Quickly for the folks out there, what is that? Which products, how does it all fit in? Um, yeah, I mean, so the easiest thing that probably where to think about it is we've got uh, you know a couple of very large development teams within the storage group. You've got, of course, 3 par. You've got our tape and our XP business. I don't do any of those, but it's virtually everything else, right? So it's uh, everything from our NAS platform, which we announced, you know, uh, uh, the file persona on 3PAR, uh, backup, data protection for 3PAR, um, you know, store virtual, you know, essentially the rest of the product portfolio is part of virtual, the virtual development unit. So a lot of stuff happening in the storage world. Yeah. The change we heard from earlier with the cloud uh, CMO, yeah. legacy, and born in the cloud are coming together. Yeah. Storage has seen a transformation over the years, right? Yeah. Quickly, I mean, yeah. I mean, just going the all flash, data centers now on the table, spinning disk as they say, might go before tape, as we always <laughs> talk about. I mean, that's not true, obviously, but, yeah. but customers want to know where to put their investments, how to take their, their, their architecture, yeah. and modernize it, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean throwing it away, no rip and replace. So what, how do you get involved in those conversations with customers, and what, is, what does that translate into from a product standpoint? Well, so I definitely agree with you that you know, storage is, uh, I was telling somebody uh, last week, storage is really, it's a really an exciting place. It's almost frightening exciting. If you, th <laughs> you think a look at not only the transformations around the cloud and the transformations around Flash, but also you've got the upstart you know, that are in there, you've got the uh, entrenched vendors who are all sort of you know, trying to figure out uh, what they do, uh, et cetera. So it's probably no ex more exciting time to be in storage. The way I talk to customers about it is there, there, there are trends in the industry that impact everything regardless if, if you are using the products or not. So let's think about cloud. A lot of our customers are probably uh, unwilling to sort of put their data outside the firewall and leave it, leave it at the SLAs or privacy uh, regulations of Azure or, uh, or uh, Amazon. But the easy provision, the cost, the you know the the, so the the fast access to the storage, et cetera, et cetera, is driving those behaviors inside the firewall for storage applications they're buying. That's why you have customers looking at OpenStack and other related technologies. So I think one of the things that you're you're going to you're seeing is that those external trends impact on converged storage systems like we sell here at HP. You know, second is uh, is the ease of use around you know, what I would call application enabled. You know, compute and storage together, right? We're calling this hyper-converged today, but basically it is turning over the keys to the application administrators, not the administrators, who want to provision storage, data protection, you know, in a very, very quick and easy to use uh, format and never actually see the storage box that's sitting behind it. So I'm sitting in vCenter and off I, I do that, right? I'm a database administrator, I want to do a backup. I don't want to call the backup guy to do that. I want to do that directly from within the environment that we're talking about. What that's all about is, you know, better TCO, right? Transferring the sort of the, the knowledge to the, the person who's most capable of making that decision, which is the application administrator. We're seeing that trend very well alive in the industry as well. So, and we're, and we're responding. So what happens to the storage administrator? Well, I don't think, I, it's, I, I, I don't think, it's like tape, I don't, and like, it's like desk, I don't think the storage administrator is going away. I think the storage administrator's job is to actually work on defining a set of business policies and business practices that the other guys get to choose from on a menu. Think about it as creating the Girl Scout cookie catalog, right? So if you have a goal level application, that goal level application comes with certain expectations around latency and SLAs, around data protection policies, et cetera. They define that, they work behind, behind that in the data center. The application administrator, when they're provisioning the application, actually then starts to make some of those decisions, which is the goal level app, the silver level app, whatever, bronze level app, and then they go from they go from there. Now, so that vision of being able to sort of provide those services, those decomposable services or reusable services, yeah. it's a, it's always been there for the yeah. storage admin. They just haven't had time. Right. <laughs> right. What's changed to allow them now to actually deliver on that promise? 
Well, I think a couple of things are you know going on, David. You know, uh, first, I think storage is actually getting easier and easier to administer. I mean, the storage administrator probably would t you know some of them would take take uh, exception with that. But if you look at the ease of provisioning, the ease of uh, work for the three-part platform as an example, we've actually looked at the TCO for quite some time. I think that's number one. I think you're also seeing things like VVOLs, which are making things like SAN a lot more achievable. You know, if you look at sort of the vCenter, the three-par sort of transition uh, with with uh, with uh, VVOLs, I think that actually makes it easy for the storage administrator. So I think I think what we're seeing is sort of sort of, uh, sort of time from that uh, from that perspective. So I got to ask a question on accelerating to this cloud architecture, right? Yeah. Like what's going on with um, the customer? And, and this is interesting, I asked Pat Gelsinger a question four years ago when he was still uh -huh. at EMC. What comes first, the infrastructure or the application? Of course, yeah. X-Intel, that's what I wanted to ask him. He all infrastructure, and then now it's now the way around. Yeah. Workloads are dominating the discussion. I completely agree. So storage agree. has to be in a position to be Agile too, but yet mm -hmm. you can't just deploy storage. I mean, you can't just, I mean, you can, you can be agile, but what's the strategy for a technologist and an architect to say, hey, I got to build a foundational service that's got to be elastic at some level and Correct. be responsive to the needs of the workloads. And that workloads could come in overnight, literally, in a week, two weeks. Sprints could create new apps. You know what's interesting is a, a fair amount I don't know why I would put a number on it, but a fair amount of the, of the cloud infrastructure is actually still running on physical storage that we call converged storage that we sell today, okay? I mean, reality, the amount of that actually that's happening with software defined from that perspective is still still pretty small. Growing, but still pretty small. And so, this, the same sort of elastic storage, the sort of capabilities that 3PAR has about you know, quality of service, et cetera, et cetera, is as meaningful in the cloud as is meaningful in converged. The difference is how you get to it and how you provision it and how you orchestrate it, right? Which is, you know, sort of, you look at OpenStack as an example. Yeah. OpenStack, easy orchestration, easy provisioning, three parts sitting, under, sitting underneath it. We're actually able to offer that customers sort of all the capabilities we and have And that's today. what the innovation is, actually tailoring the new yeah, I don't think it's about new widgets and storage. I think it's new widgets in management, new widgets in Software. simplicity, new yeah. widgets in you know, uh, you know, best practices, et cetera. And I would agree with Dave, we, you know, this has been the holy grail, you know, from storage tools to all the people out there that have actually been trying to do this for yeah. the last whatever it is, you know, 10 yeah. to 15 years. You've probably written more about it than, you know, than, than any, anybody, right? I think we're now on the cusp of doing that, and I think part of the reason is that applications being virtualized yeah. is actually helping us, you know, there's more commonality than there is. It's kind of like containers and cloud, like uh, containers have been around for a while, but Docker hits the timing. You're talking Correct. about timing. Correct. The timing's perfect, and that's what you're saying. It's like, that's this exactly is the time right. now, all that, dreams are now <laughs> realized. Yeah, and, hey, and, what and do you and think about that? Uh, well, yeah. and you know, it's interesting, we had Jason Newton on earlier mm -hmm. talking about sort of the, these, these four sort of foundational areas yeah. of, of the messaging, the you know, hybrid infrastructure, the security, the sort of data piece, the productivity piece, and you're starting to have conversations that tie into that. Um, you know, you're talking about the orchestration piece, mm -hmm. you know, the, the tying into the cloud layer, but at the end of the day, you're still a product company. Yeah. Right? And you need to have hot products. So in thinking about sort of the hot products, mm -hmm. you know, obviously 3PAR, everybody talks about 3PAR, but your portfolio is store once, yep. sort of EBA, right, is part of that, mm -hmm. uh, backup products. Right. It's where most of the spend is, right? So what's happening there? And and what's HP's story around that? So maybe, the, maybe the, not that I want to ask myself my own question, Dave, but maybe the answer is, okay, what are you doing about those trends in the yeah. industry, right? So if you take a look at the, what I'll call the application enablement trend, you look at products like Recovery Manager, right, which provides application management, right, uh, of uh, application recovery on a three-part environment. You look at uh, the HC200, the CS200, hyperconverged platform, zero to 15 minutes you're serving storage for a specific workload, but it's based on store virtual technology, which has shipped several hundred thousand copies. That's not only good for just VDI, but good for everything. And that actually relates to the other thing that's in your data centers, number two. You look at the work that we're doing around application enablement within the store once product line, where from Oracle, the database administrator can make backup copies for dev and test without calling the storage guy. You know, so we're, we've got a, a foot 
in each of those camps are the trends that I'm that I'm that I'm talking about. So enabling those sort of foundational exactly pillars right. is really where you're putting it. Because I, I, I think it is a, it all is all about application enablement, making it simpler, easier, easy, you know, easily accessible, et cetera. Well, what we're poking at is, you know, yeah. when you come up with a slide, yeah, you know, then they, you know, Meg presents it or whatever, yeah. or Jason on the cube, it's uh -huh. like, okay, that's marketing. Yeah. But what we're what we're trying to do is connect the dots from you know development to the, the vision. So that marketing presumably comes from customer pull. Correct. All right. So how, what's the process for sort of translating that back into product development and then back out to well, product? Well, I, th I think the issue is 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 how flexible are the architectures that we've actually built uh, today to actually go uh, go go do that. Right. If you look at sort of again, you know, we were shipping software to find storage ten years ago before software to find storage was hot. We built a tech. We built a technology, and this goes back to this comment that David Scott made. I won't use the two the two words. You know what two words I'm thinking of. Oh right? yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna get purple. I can't say it. I'm gonna get purple hair if I say it. It's, it's a bet. Polymorphic. Is it gonna but, stick? We've said that. That's but, a, but the but the <laughs> issue. What it's all about. He is, stuck to his guns, though. Yes, he exactly. Stuck to right. his guns. He he's probably. Well, but when you think about polymorphic, but he's, but, he's but actually that's, technically accurate. Ex, but that's so all is about. So it's called dead fish. But that's all about. That's sushi. <laughs> Am I talking to him or are I talking to you? <laughs> Not going to I'm going to tap no, out now. Wait, wait, so okay. <laughs> so what I'm talking about, about is, on the, the, it's all is about the, it's about the architecture underneath the product. The fact that you can develop, de deliver a block array device that does iSCSI and, fi and, and fiber channel for software defined in hyper-converged and a physical appliance, same technology infrastructure and architecture, same management plan above, above the top, regardless of what the workloads are, We've built architectures at HP, three part would be the same way with the technology it has. We've built architectures at HP for this generation of problem, and that's what we're focused on. So from an if your question is from an engineering perspective, what are you guys working on? We're working on extending the sort of capabilities that we have uh, internally. The same would be true with store once. Yeah. Whether it's software only, VSA, physical appliance, once you ingest the code, you never have to rehydrate your backup and now transfer it to a recovery manager, same technology base. So, so it's ease that's of not use is it's, number it's one. It's not exactly sexy, Dave, but it's actually uh, in a resilient architecture that yeah. we built over the last five to six years that's prepped us for the plot spot we're in today. Well, but it, ease of use is the key with the management piece. Correct. Right, I mean that's, you know, say, Things that get boring means we're reliable, right? That's kind of like when you say not sexy. Yes, you Mrs. Mrs. Spelman would never say I was uh, yeah. sexy, for sure. <laughs> she certainly would say I was reliable. <laughs> <laughs> Reliable's and, good. I and, bet you Mrs. Spelman Yeah, would and you're not going to ask her, Dave. You're not going to ask her. <laughs> let's get her on the phone right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what about, yeah. let's talk about backup yeah. for a minute, because, you know, it's, again, not a sexy, but really important. I can't, I find backup sexy, sorry, I, I just do. So. Because because the opportunity to completely transform backup is right before us. That's right. Um, with things like snapshotting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, flash comes into play. It That's sort right. of changes data sharing. So, what's the story around backup, and how is HP transforming that? So, what's what's really interesting about backup, especially look at the day and the age where we've got you know arrays, uh, which are you know five and six nines available. Customers are doing snapshot and replication in the case of DR, <coughs> and then they're using a traditional backup ISV to back that up where they pay a per license fee and they pay a per capacity charge on top of that. You know, that's belt suspenders and duct tape, effectively, right? <laughs> we looked at that problem and what we what we determined was that if customers believe, and, and actually, by the way, what we're starting to see is snapshot and replication into a different from a governance rule perspective is the equivalent of actually taking a backup offsite. The problem is that backup that replication is actually on the most expensive piece in your data center, which is primary storage, right? So what if we could actually do that, but also make a permanent archive of that uh, snapshot in the event of a failure, because a replication is not a backup. Corrupt, corrupt in data center number one, you replicate the data somewhere so the corruption goes with it. What if we could actually provide a way to provide a very, very simplistic and easy use application consistent snapshot and capability that not only stored the most vital information on three part, but stored backup copies on a store once box. What if we could do that? And the benefit is, same old, same old recover, cover characteristics, much better TCO for the customer, okay? Um, and with all the, ins, ins, uh, you know, uh, great features in store ones from a replication uh, and uh, a replication capability, we can do it extremely fast. 
So we've looked at data that in backing up a virtualized environment for a tradi traditional ISV versus using a product like Recovery Manager, 17 times faster to do backup uh, than it is uh, through a traditional ISV product. And so, I guess to answer your question, going back to whole application focus, application enablement, application you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, oriented product portfolio, it's looking at what applications are doing and, and delivering on benefits around the applications is, that we're, uh, is what we're looking at. And then, in terms of just, I think software defined or software led or whatever yeah. you do, I always think of metadata. Because mm -hmm. um, it's all locked in boxes yeah. today. And it seems like part of the strategy is to elevate that long term and actually leverage that metadata. Is that mm -hmm. a direction that the industry's going? So give me, a, give me some more, for instance, um, give me an example so on metadata. To take your backup example, I have I have catalog data that's sitting inside okay. my my appliance, yeah. um, and I can only get to it through From one the, path. But yeah. if I could access it across you know a, a portfolio, I could maybe leverage that in different ways. You, you want to not only access it, but you want to be able to interrogate it, yeah. right? And actually, you know, products like on with it. like products like autonomy, yep. right? They'll actually look inside the backup and determine whether or not you know you've got data that's supposed to be backed up or not backed up, etc. Automate my policies in a way that yeah. the human maybe can't do. Yeah, and today, you, you, today I think the problem is you've got that at the not you've got a proprietary sort of uh, interface at the point of storage. You've got another proprietary interface at the point of of recovery you know, of backup. Well, with products like Recovery Manager Central, you've got one sort of set of uh, storage, if we will, that not only can you leverage the metadata that's stored at the point of inception but also that's put in at the, type, at the side of backup. And I think if you look at the work we're already doing with the autonomy guys about actually, actually interrogating the data that's in the backup, we can actually provide a much richer data stream or metadata stream um, than you can do today with, with conventional, uh, conventional mechanisms. Bill, appreciate you taking the time. One quick sound bite for, from Roy in the segment. What's the vibe like here at HP Discover for the folks that aren't here? Describe the scene here. What's it like you know, here? It, yeah, every year it gets better. I just I have to tell you, you know, the the customer vibe around you know HP storage, whether it's whether it's Flash or whether it's the interesting work we're doing around recovery or the hyperconverged platform, et cetera. We just left a you know a storage leadership council meeting, which is our you know top customers here in here in the Americas, and that, you know that that room started with ten people and now there's fifty people in it. And so just the vibe about storage in general here at the show, um, and I think the vibe around HP is, it gets better every, every the year. The storage group continues to deliver, certainly in the earnings, Dave, Dave and yeah. I follow that, but it's become an, almost a catalyst internally. No, I don't want you to make it too easy, John. You know, so don't, <laughs> don't make it easy, because I, you know, I have to work the other 364 days I'm not here. But I think the storage group is, if you ask, ask Meg or Antonio or any of those guys, the storage group is leading, is leading around growth, is leading around you know, um, you know, yeah. operating margins, et cetera, et cetera, taking market share. Okay, um, you know, um, but it's in the center of the center of the discussion. You talk about all oh, the transformation. That's right. And you got big data. You got cloud, hyperconverge. You got, you know, software-defined yeah. data center and infrastructure. Yeah. Storage is this, this the linchpin in everything now because. Now you get with Flash, you're now on the app side. <laughs> you got systems of intelligence, Dave was talking That's about right. with, with Bobby Patrick earlier. This is, it's got to come from somewhere. <laughs> the brain, like you said, the data centers are, yeah. clouds are all run on infrastructure. Yeah. There are, there are storage I mean, that's somewhere. A, that's a dirty little secret, right? Yeah, this is, storage you know, somewhere. The, the storage we're talking about is still the storage that we're, yeah. that we're, that we're <laughs> it's selling. It's stored somewhere <laughs> yeah. in someone's drives. Exactly Okay, right. Bill Philbin, VP of Virtual Development Unit, HP Storage, here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back with more coverage from theCUBE, sharing the signal to you here. Go to hpdiscover.social, check out the site, go to crowdshot.net. Join the conversation, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break.